Hello, everybody. Welcome to Wine World TV, the best wine show anywhere. I'm your host, Mark Fusco. Now, before we get started, make sure you are smashing that like button and subscribing to the channel. Every like and subscription helps build the channel even better. Spread the word to your friends about, well, the best wine show anywhere. Duh. Anyway, this is part one of a three-part series on wines from Gonzalez Bias Portfolio. Like all the wines in the series, this is a, well, all the wines in the series. Uh, this is a free sample and I have free reign to review it however I wish. Today's wine comes from Primus or Primus. It is the 2020 Primus The Blend. Okay, so first of all, you might be like, well, didn't you just review a wine for them like three some odd weeks ago? Yes, yes I did. I thought it would be a good transition to the other two wines in this mini series. Um, so this is from a different set of wines from a different PR firm. And I got all of them around the same time. Kind of, I don't know what word to use actually, but yeah, a cool coincidence. Anyway, uh, Gonzalez Bias has been growing, has a growing portfolio of wines and spirits with close to 40 in total. They have winemaking roots that stretch back to Spain since 1835. They are the most famous for sherry, at least for me they are. So besides their own brand, Gonzalez Bias, they also have Tio Pepe, Harvey's, and Wisdom and Water. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be honest, Wisdom and Water, not familiar with that one, but the other two, absolutely. Matter of fact, I've had Tio Pepe several times. Fantastic stuff, so you, sh you should seek it out. Um, if you want to watch my previous episode about Primus uh, Carmenere, there's a link below for that. The upshot about the background on Primus is that they are a pioneering regenerative organic and biodynamic winery in Apalta. They also mentioned that vines date back to 1889. Nayenda Apalta appears to be the modern version of what was founded in 1889, that's the name of the winery, though they have what they call a centennial cellar. In other words, a cellar that's at least 100 years old. I go into a little bit of what regenerative agriculture is in that other episode, but I also go deep dive as an all about regenerative in episode number 69 from about three years ago as part of a multi-part series on agriculture. Link to that episode below along with a link to uh, a farming practices playlist on YouTube. Um, and if you just want to like go to episode 69, but don't watch the whole episode, there's a ton of links. You can go down the rabbit hole about regenerative and just a lot of other agricultural things. The links off of that whole series are about the same, though each episode may have some episode specific links. All right, so let's travel back to the Colchagua Valley and specifically the Apalta Dio, where the parent winery, Vigna Neyen de Apalta is. As I mentioned in my prior episode, prior episode on Primus or Primus, the brand appears to have been wines made from several places in Chile in the past. At least that's how it's described in the webpage. From the website, they included Casablanca and the Maipo Valley. Now they only come from Apalta. Also, um, they have another line of wines. I, so I edited all the Carmen Air, and now I'm recording this set of, this set of stuff. And as I was editing the um, Primus Carmen Air uh, episode, they have another line of wines that's actually kind of, um, this is kind of the in-between. So they have like a more value-driven one. And it's really isn't a huge amount of price difference between the value-driven and this one, but they call it, um, oh, now I don't remember what they call it. They'll have it down here in the lower third. It's like Telus or something like that. Um, anyway, they have that brand or that line of wines. And they have the Primus line. Um, and Primus is in the name of the first one. And then they have Nayen, which that retails for around a hundred some odd dollars. Okay. Um, let's see what else. There was something else I want to talk about before we get into the stats of the wine. That might've been it. What I just told you about the, uh, about the winery. If anything else comes to mind, I will bring it up. Let's get the stats for this wine instead. The 2019 Primus The Blend, suggested retail price, $20.99. It is from the Apalta Dio. It is a red blend comprised of 40% Carmenere, 35% Cabernet Sauvignon, 
10% Syrah, 10% Petit Verdot, and 5% Cabernet Franc. It is a certified sustainable uh, Chile wine made with organic grapes from you know, Eco -cert Certified, certified vegan, uh, aging. They had 33% of it was in 5,000 liter Fudras and 66% was in French oak barrels for 12 months. Not any indication of new, used, whatever, but French oak, okay? Uh, or, you know, smaller barrels. ABV is 13.5%. The TA is 5.25 grams per liter. The pH is 3.75 and the RS is 2.54 grams per liter. Now this is, you could call this a, uh, yeah, actually I, it is in the notes. I was gonna freestyle, but it's actually in the script. A couple of notes, you could call this a super old school Bordeaux with the inclusion of Syrah in the 18th century up until the early 1900s, depending on the vintage. A couple links below mention this. Also, this blend varies widely. The 2020 is Cabernet Sauvignon dominant, but the Carmenere is uh, very little. Plus Malbec is added. So it's probably very dependent on the vintage and well, what grapes and how, you know, what the grapes, how the grapes are performing uh, from the vintage and how they're performing in the winery from all that. Aging, yes, the percentages add up to 99%. My guess is that it's really one third and two third for oak. Uh, we don't know the composition of new versus used. I kind of already said that. The Fujas are very likely French and older. All right, let's get into the wine before I do that. All right. I'd almost say yet yeah, another rare daytime session, but um, the last session was during the day and I've been doing kind of more daytime sessions recently. It's just that the way my schedule works out now with you know the real job that I have, um, I don't only work nights all the time. And while recording at night is honestly preferable um, because I don't close five nights a week, um, sometimes the afternoon, sometimes after a day shift, is the perfect time for me to do this. And in many ways, oh, I don't need a full glass. Uh, in many ways, um, sometimes fresher if I'm doing this during the day. Um, now, if it's on my day off and I do it like in the morning, I'm really fresh. I used to do that old, old, old school back in the day when it was Leet Wine TV, um, I would do I would do my reviews in the morning. So uh, that was cool. I don't do that anymore, but just, just doesn't work out that way. All right, so let's get into what's going on here. So color-wise, uh, 2020, right? Yeah, color-wise 2020, um, there is a little bit of orange. So four years into it, it's a little young for to really see any like major color change. Um, definitely red, uh, a deep ruby. There is a little bit of um, uh, less concentration at the edge and a little bit of tinge of orange or browning, but that's okay. It's not a big deal. Uh, really, you know, staining on the glass is minimal. And uh, let's see what it smells like. So lots of herbaceousness and rusticness. Um, so I, I know I mentioned this during the Carmen Air series that I do get rusticity from South America, more Chile than Argentina, I would say, or Uruguay. Um, I also get rusticity from Spanish wines and I get rusticity from Texas wines. Um, and they're all kind of a different style of rusticity. So like Texas has its own like version of it. Spain kind of has its own version. I also will get, depending on the, the part of the country in Italy, I'll get some rusticity. So when I use that terminology, this is not a negative, uh, it's not negative. I mean, it, it's not a, it doesn't, it doesn't indicate quality. It's just like say I smell blackberry, just because I smell blackberry doesn't mean it's a bad wine or a good wine or okay wine. They just do smell blackberry, right? But there's a bit of rusticity. Ooh, wow. I got like a whiff of like meat or bacon. As you know, as you can tell, I haven't talked about fruit yet. So this is more non-fruit forward, at least right now. Yeah, there's like this meat quality, like a uh, salami uh, type of thing. And I get this like red and black kind of fruit thing, more red fruit than black fruit. It's almost like you have like a little compote, like a little jam. So you have a charcut, so check it out. You got a char charcuterie thing, right? So you got, you got your like salamis and like your chorizo, 
uh, or other salami, like Iberico ham, stuff like that. Got that on the got that on the on the board, and then you've got a little bit of like raspberry and a little bit of blackberry jam hanging out over there, and then you've got some like hard cheeses. We'll we'll just say, we'll just keep the theme Spanish, even though this is Chile. Uh, we'll keep the theme uh, theme Spanish, so some manchego cheese, right? Not that I get the manchego cheese, but it would go great with it. Okay, now I have this whole power suggestion in my head, and with the um. With the, with the charcuterie board. Now I'm smelling mustard seed. I think what it is, I'm smelling the wine and I'm thinking about charcuterie instead. Yeah, I had lunch, so it's not because I'm hungry necessarily. I smell a little fern, it's a little green coming in here. So we, we have, we have you know, Carmen Air, Cabernet Sauvignon, and Cabernet Franc uh, all in this. Now Cabernet Franc is only 5%, but if we're looking at the percentages, we have 80% of the grapes that are in here are grapes that will have um, pyrazine or can, or can show pyrazine, okay? So um, I don't get like bell pepper or jalapeno. I don't even really necessarily get cumin like I usually get from Chilean Carmenere or Chilean wines in general, but more Carmenere. Um, I don't get that enchilada thing, but I do get like some leafy green type of thing, some fern, some... Like maybe you have maybe you have like um, some strawberries on the, on the charcuterie board, and you get like the you know they, they let the little leaves the, the little from the strawberry smell a little bit of that. So there's a there's a a green herbaceous leafy thing going on. Yeah. Um, when I initially smelled it, I was like, ah, okay, you know. But sometimes these wines take a little bit. It smells fantastic right now. The initial smell was like, oh yeah, it's fine, and now it's really really opening up like. I can probably smell this for a little bit, but let's get let's get this uh, on the palate. All the fruits on the palate, it's really coming through. It's not fruit bomb or fruit jammy, but we got your blackberry, you got your raspberry, you've got a little bit of um, uh, a little of spice, a little bit of cinnamon clove. Um, so I do suspect that some of these French oak barrels are. You know, maybe not third, fourth, fifth use, like not necessarily use, but they may have like a second use oak barrel. So maybe it's barrels that were used to make uh, the Nayin line, and then they're using some of those for this. Maybe they're using a little bit of new also. Um, but there's a little bit of cinnamon clove. I even, I even had gotten that on the nose. I'm getting a little peppercorn, a little black and green peppercorn. A little bit of oregano. Oregano. That's not. A, that's not necessarily a, um, a, 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 a a aroma I get from the Bordeaux varieties or French varieties. Um, usually, I truly do get that from Italian varieties. Whew, you can. I can really feel the alcohol. I know I haven't swallowed anything. I can really feel it. I know it said. All right. So the the la the back label says thirteen five on this, but the but the text sheet. Oh, 13 five. It feels higher. It might be like 14. So we might be like right at that at that break point. I know I've mentioned in other videos, you can't cross 14. You can have your leeway, but you can't cross 14. So this could be as high as 14 or as low as uh, 12, but it's not 12. Anyway, um, but yeah, uh, the fruit is definitely ripe. Not quite jammy, but it is ripe. Delicious. There's a spice component, like a spiciness. So. During the Carmenere series, I may have talked about spicy red fruit. So I got a little bit of that. There's a spice component to that or like spiciness to it. Um, there's a um, earthiness to it, forest floor. I mean, it's, there's a lot going on in this wine. It's delicious. Um, alcohol's calmed down. I think it was just it's the first wine of the day. So I kind of got hit with the, uh, with the alcohol. I did a few sips real quick and spit. Now my palate is used to it. So now I don't feel like this burn going down my esophagus. Now I'm kind of like, yeah, 13.5 is probably exactly where it was. But initially it was like, whoo. But yeah, um, I think I think it's, I, I'm sure it's 13.5. It's, my question was, it felt like a 14.5, 15 and legally it couldn't be that. But now that I've had it, sure. There's a little bit of red hot, a little cinnamon to this. Um, I'm kind of getting at the end. So there is a bit of heat 
in the sense of not necessarily alcohol, but a little bit of heat and spiciness to it. And just meat, like all the meats. All the meats, all the meats. For a few years, I've been trying to find Kenny Main from ESPN back when he was on ESPN. He has a, he used to do this quote. I swear it was him. Maybe it's not him. Maybe it's somebody else. But it would be like, Garcon, bring me all the meats and cheeses of all the land or something like that. I want to find that clip so I can use that when I do these descriptions. And I go all the meats and all the cheeses. So just know that that's my reference when I say that. It's delicious. I think it's well made. Really good. Yeah. If you find this, you should go out and buy it. I like it a lot. Yeah. I, I crushed I crushed the Carmenere already, and it was fantastic, by the way. Um, so I'm sure I'll crush this, you know, shortly after the review. Maybe not tonight, but shortly after review. Yeah, that's going to do it. I think, I think I've think i described the wine. I think you should get it. It has some great pairings with some meats. Uh, definitely anything meaty you can, you can pair this with. So steaks, burgers, pizza, stew, roasted, anything roasted. If you really want to do like roasted chicken, like really herbaceous chicken, you could. Um, with like roasted potatoes. Someone asked me for that. Something like that. Like what would I pair with? Blah, blah, blah. And it was a different red wine. And I was like, you could even do chicken. So in my, I've already got that in my head about doing that with a, a, a lighter red wine. This isn't necessarily light, but knowing that it's a lot of car, uh, Cabernet Sauvignon in there, it's not super tannic. Even with a Syrah, I mean, all the, a lot of the grapes that are in there are grapes that can be tannic. The tannic is, the tannins are very well managed. They're not really super dry, but it is a bit of a dryness in the mouth. All right, that's going to do it. Anyway, uh, if you enjoy what I'm doing here, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe and tell your friends. And we'll see you next time with some more Gonzalez Bias.